On July 29, 1951, in the Susquehanna River near Harmony, Pennsylvania, the first known Korean Latter-day Saint was baptized. As he came up out of the water, Brother Kim heard a voice. On the inside leaf of his scriptures, he recorded the words he heard, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, Brother Kim's homeland lay devastated by war. North Korea had invaded the South, reducing cities and industries to rubble. Thousands had died, and hungry refugees lived in makeshift huts. It was into this setting that Brother Kim returned home and undertook the Lord's errand to feed his sheep. Brother Kim immediately began to share the gospel wherever he could. In both public and private life, he was a zealous missionary. He brought the gospel to quite a large number of young Korean students, and it wasn't long before a nucleus of converts and investigators could be gathered together on Sundays where he would teach them a Sunday school class. Meanwhile, with a doctorate from Cornell, Brother Kim began rising in government and educational circles. He was named president of Hong Ik College, then appointed chief Korean representative to UNESCO. Shortly thereafter, he became chairman of the Seoul Board of Education and finally vice minister of education for the Republic of Korea, a cabinet level position. He personally took a proposal before the government for the church's official recognition in Korea. Because of long-held misconceptions about the church, passage was considered impossible. But with Dr. Kim's endorsement, it passed. One member observed, it was almost a miracle. Dr. Kim put his reputation on the line again to gain permission for LDS missionaries to enter South Korea. After agreeing to be their financial sponsor and guaranteeing they would do no harm to the Korean people, the first two full-time missionaries were allowed entrance into Korea in April 1956. And it's the first time I'd met him. And I thought to myself, what a giant of a man. Because here is a, an older Korean gentleman and a man of obvious prestige and position surrounded by a bunch of young people, students, um, some of them in college, but mostly from high schools there to greet the missionaries as we came in. And knowing this, the, the thing of status and face in Korea, I thought, this has to be a great man to be willing to put his reputation on the line for the church. We used to mention to everybody that we possibly could that he was our district president and everyone knew him and didn't just know him, but they thought highly of him. He was well respected. It indeed lent a, a sense of respectability to the church that, that it didn't have at that time. He was a strength to the missionaries. We never had a moment's fear because Dr. Kim was there and he was there to take care of us. Uh, food was scarce and times were hard and he fed us often. It, you can't think about Korea in the early days. The harshness of the life and the conditions under which people were living without having a profound love and appreciation for this good man. One Sunday in Seoul, uh, Dr. Kim was teaching his weekly Sunday school class when a emissary from the president of the country, Sigmund Rhee, came and told him that the president wanted to see him right away. And I remember I was sitting in the front row. Two distinguished looking gentlemen came in and, uh, and they were whispering and asking him to go with them. Brother Kim graciously thanked him and said, when I finish my class, I'll be happy to go with you. And those two gentlemen were not happy at all, and they left. 
And uh, so that very moment, I felt something in my heart. Ah, this uh, great teacher think the sharing the gospel is so important. Brother Kim continued to labor with a sense of urgency for his country and for his church. Then, in August of 1959, a friend noted that he looked unusually tired. Less than a month later, he died of a stroke at age 54. Nearly every university and college president in the country that came to pay their respects. And almost without exception, they remarked that Dr. Kim had invited them at one time or another out to church. Dr. Kim Hozik was a member for only eight years, but the, the impact he has on this, the church is immeasurable. We have 16 stakes established. We have a temple of the Lord in Korea these days. We have um, Koreans who are uh, nurturing and leading the church. Uh, it's, it's one of the great miracles of, uh, of church history. Dr. Kim has never been forgotten by the Korean saints. There are second and third generation children in the church now who know of Kim ho Jik, the first Korean elder. We could call him the founder of the church in Korea.